I was very young. I was uh, 13 years old. I think I was 13 with two friends and one older friend. And he gave us something to smoke. And all I remember is um, we smoked a little bit and nothing much was happening. And then we smoked a little bit more. And then the, I saw a white line on, on a grass strip and we were all on our knees climbing up this white line. And after that, uh, I knew this was fun. This was good. So I did, didn't really use it properly until university after that, just a little, a few times in school. Um, but I was always good at growing, growing anything, tomatoes, you know. So when you're good like that, and then uh, you, you're curious, you want to find out where certain things are, what countries sativas are from and what thing. I mean, it's just, it's like tomatoes or, or grapes or anything, so. Now I'm 51 and I'm still playing with it, so, you know, it's a lot, it's a lot of years. I didn't, I didn't really go around the world to find genetics. I started traveling uh, with girlfriends and, and, and uh, traveling Asia from Australia was a very normal. It was like people come from Italy, they go to Spain or Greece and travel around Turkey. And I, I, uh, I started collecting seeds. Um, we lived in Mullumbimby in, in Australia, so there was a bit of rainforest, it was very easy to grow marijuana there was not a big economy and most people were growing marijuana and selling it uh, to get a little bit extra income in the 80s and 70s and 80s and everyone would travel and go to nepal or india or thailand burma laos cambodia all those countries and uh, there's marijuana there so it slowly it developed and there was a bunch of guys that used to do that each year and we all swap seeds and then we all go to different countries and see if there was anything new and um, I suppose that's where the genetic thing started, you know, years ago in Mullumbimby. But um, then I went to Holland in the in the late 80s, early 90s, and uh, and um, and there we we got organised, you know, and that that's where uh, you could finally put down 100 uh, seeds of, of uh, say of northern India and and 100 seeds of Thailand, and uh, and then you could pick the best male and female and then you could do work with that and you, you, we had licenses in the early 90s to do the work with the seeds we weren't allowed to grow cannabis for cannabis but we could do that until big growers started putting male plants in the rooms and then we lost all the licenses so you know every country's had its time i mean spain's having it now with all the associations and it's not licensed but it's tolerated um so everywhere where it's least harmful and least problematic for me, I usually am, am, am growing there, you know. So it's developed, it was, ne it was an evolved thing. You never grow up thinking you're going to be a, a breeder of marijuana genetics, you know. Okay. In Australia, it's illegal to this day. So, you know, it's not a, it's not a, a dream a child has. So uh, I suppose I just followed what I liked, you know. And which is the reason, according to you, uh, why you became a Shanti Baba, mm. and uh, there are uh, many other growers who are only a simple grower. Well, I, I, I actually I, I can't really answer you that. That Shanti Baba, I was in the right place at the right time, maybe. Uh, the Shanti Baba, the name actually came from when I was in living in uh, Manali, uh, up in the northern northern India, and rubbing charis every year. We used to do that, um, and. I was pretty relaxed, so Shanti means peaceful person. So, and that name stuck with me. And then, uh, why? I mean, there's a lot of excellent growers out there. There's a lot of better growers than me. And um, it's just that maybe I uh, I have an eye and a nose for uh, breeding. You know, making selections and testing things. I'm very scientific in my methods. So, uh, and I'm very thorough. And I'm probably. Uh, one of the most qualified guys, you know, I've studied biology and I've done all of the things and we've had the laboratories and stuff. So, I mean, yeah, uh, when the glove fits, you wear it, we say in, in English. So uh, I, that's how it really kind of happened. But I had some good luck too, you know. Um, in the early 90s in Holland, that was, 
that was where everybody the the well, everybody came to Holland in that in the early 90s and that was a center of like headquarters for exchanging genetics and ideas and new cloning methods and tissue culture and you know they were cutting edge stuff so most most of the people that were there in the late 80s early 90s they were there they're kind of the mythological people in the the field now you know and there you, you start to, to work with the green out that's where um, I, I, st I was working and then I joined hands um, my girlfriend was uh, working on the, the the interiors for the greenhouse and that's where we met Ariana and Brenda and that's where we started the greenhouse thing and that was 1992 and um, I'd been there a few years already in Holland oh, okay. So we'd done some growing, but not like that. And then we got organized there and uh, Ariane asked what we wanted to do. And I said, seed company, because he only had coffee shops. And so I said about, uh, we all partnered up and started that greenhouse seed company. I ran it basically, and, and they ran the, the coffee shops and the varieties went to the coffee shops that we made famous over the years. And then Neville came in and he brought all of the plants that were the Sensi Seed okay. Bank. So we had kind of that that dream time, you know, the, the golden years, I call it. Okay, yeah, yeah. And we won a lot of things with the the White family and the Super Silver Hazes and all those things. And we, we don't want to spend too much time to talk about it, but uh, there is a lot of uh, legend about some strain like uh, White Weed or Super Silver Hazes. And, yep. uh, and the problem that then uh, there, there, there was uh, with the, 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 the paternity of the string yep and uh, you can uh, tell to us in, in not too oh. much time what's happened i i know my version uh, there's other versions of course you know um ingmar was growing uh, ingmar had uh, a version of white widow we at the greenhouse we had the seed version we'd made the seed up he had a, a, a cut he had he wasn't making seeds at that time and uh, he was entering it as a different names like um, we ended a great white shark at one stage and he uh, called a peacemaker it was the same plant came first and second but I mean you know um, he was a grower and still to this day I think he's still supplying Ariane with with uh, things and they work together and when I left in 1998 I took away the parent plants that I had we if you have a look at the history of everything the seed version of white widow has always been pretty clear i think the clone version that gets a bit m mixed up like super silver haze like amnesia like everything else that came after um, but since then we i went away from doing the very high thc varieties you know i um that was all right in holland that was the recreational side i went to switzerland for medical um, the CBD things started to come out of that thing. I've since then opened up that uh, this company, that C CBD crew company. Yeah, yeah. That we will yeah. talk about. Yeah, and then uh, I, we we kind of diverged like that. And then Neville left, and he came and joined us mm -hmm. up here uh, and Howard. So we, it was just uh, there's still a lot of hearsay and everything about that, but. To this day, I think the proof is in the seed. So if whoever buys the seed, they know what they're they're getting from. So I usually, I mean, the the uh, the Dave Watsons and the Rob Clarks of this world, they recommend all my the hazes and and all of the widows as the original seed versions. So that would be the best way to describe why there's different stories. Mm -hmm. Basically, there's a, a clone version and there's a seed version. Yeah. You know, you, you had to change the name of your. I I changed the name. Uh, I didn't have to. I mean, um, there no one owns a name. Uh, everything that you see with TM after it is a load of rubbish in seed companies. Um, uh, basically, everyone called uh, one year after uh, Greenhouse, where we when I was with Ari and came on with White Widow, there was White Widow everywhere. I changed the name because I, uh, it's confusing. There's no real version of White Widow. I called it Black Widow when I come to Mr. Nice, just to go away from that, that confusion. So eventually people who do their education they, and they want the original genetics, they usually come, come and see us. So we're, we're not into selling feminized seed. We're still regular seed bank. We still have males. Many people come to our seed bank now still to, to get males actually because that's gone out of the market or yeah, everywhere yeah. else. So it's all, I mean, we survived and uh, 
and since then we we've developed the medical thing and like listen you know um whatever stories that have happened in the 2000s after all of that had died down um we came out mr nice came out with critical mass you know and since then you can see that every other company has copied us with critical mass uh, they use the same words that i did the same like when i wrote about white widow so it's the same story you can you, you can believe who, who you want yeah, yeah. but you know and, uh, and uh, <laughs> how is born uh, uh, mr nice man how, how you meet uh, Mm. Howard Marks and, and then um, you start... Uh, uh, how, how, how was Mr. Nice uh, Seed Company born? Um, I was 1996, Howard had just come out of jail. Uh -huh. He came over to the Milky Way. Uh, it was the time uh, I won with White Rhino, uh, uh, the medical, the very first medical strain. He contacts you? He came, he, I, he came up to me in okay. the Milky Way and I didn't know who he was. I hadn't read the book or anything. And uh, he asked if I wanted a beer <laughs> and then... We got talking, he must have been watching the thing and we'd won and he was having a look and he came and asked if there was any chance and I didn't know who he was so I said, well, you know, who are you? And then he pulled out this book and then I said, oh, well, I'll read it and get back to you. Became was natural? Uh... Very, very, probably the, my, one of the, my greatest uh, decisions of my life, you know, that was... Uh, He's, uh, he's one, one of the most uh, sympathetic people in the world, very educated and um, like-minded. So we, we, we like to tell the truth and, and get things done and, and do it in a scientific way. And he was, to this day, I mean, I was with him last weekend in, in Spain doing the Biocannabis Cup. So, you know, <clears throat> we get older, but still the principles stay the same. Yeah. He, he's a great guy. In Italy, uh, th th there are yet the, the, the picture of uh, the, the the big uh, big greenhouse. You remember? Oh, in with, the Magadino yeah, Plain in Switzerland, with, uh, with uh, hundreds of plants, yeah, thousands, of plants. thousands. <laughs> okay, and uh, and um, also today, the, the, the people never see again a picture like that. Because uh, because uh, nobody uh, grow uh, like that, that quantity yeah. of plant, and maybe also that the quality of the of plant. And uh, thank you. In one point, uh, uh, arrive the polish. <laughs> Why and what's that? Mm, oof, that's uh, um, we had a uh, in Ticino. These uh, you know uh, what it is is there's no uh, universal law of cannabis yeah. so we were it's yeah it, we were in switzerland at that stage for, from 1996 to 2003 uh, the police used to go past our greenhouses and and see if anyone had broken into it you know they, they were look they were helping us then perigini came into power in ticino as the head prosecutor and um I don't know, maybe he, he was a, a born-again Christian and, and, and decided that all the shops that were selling the aromatherapeutic yeah. bags, he'd had enough of this, he'd have a lot of complaints from the border police. You know, things were, uh, you know, they, it was a lot of confusion, yeah. there was a lot of silliness going on. I wasn't part of all those shops anyway, we were just doing it, we were distilling oil for the body shop at that stage, but we, we did have the biggest grows going on, you know, you can still see it on on the YouTube and stuff. Um, I could consider that the golden years of, of Switzerland. They were really, they were very advanced then. They were very, they were exactly what I'm doing now in, in uh, if you wait for about three or four months, I'll show you another grow like that. Oh, good. But it will I be wait. in America. It will be in America and, okay. if, and uh, but I mean, I, I don't know what happened. Uh, basically, no law changed in Switzerland. The, the way that it was interpreted by the prosecutor of the time made everything go away and uh, changed the, the face of the industry in, in this area. Uh, it was a pity because, you know, it's a beautiful area, got sunshine and yeah, yeah, it, sure. it brought a lot of work back here. But now that moved down to Spain and uh, hopefully to Italy and uh, to countries like Slovenia. I was in Slovenia last week. Uh, Croatia, you know, 700, 1,000 hectares of, of hemp they're growing. They're, they're doing distillations. They're, they're really, they're not waiting for people to tell them that this is not incorrect. They're, they're making medicine. They're already going about it. So certain pockets of Europe 
are, are free and easy and other pockets are very highly restricted. You just, uh, it's no, there's no reason to it all, you know what I mean? You know, that time you, you went in jail? Mm. Yep, For in a, Switzerland. How many, how, how much time you, you stayed? Um, they gave me, uh, they gave me originally four, uh, they asked for six years, they gave me four years. Uh, in appeal they'd made a mistake, uh, they, the maximum they could have given me was three years, so they halved it from four to two. I did 16 months and th three months. I did about 19 months in in uh, in Swiss hotel. I prefer to call it. And uh, yeah, I met some interesting characters there. If I was looking for work, I, I could have got a lot of work from Southern Italy. <laughs> but I mean, you know, that was a time where it was a strong experience. It was a very strong experience for my family and for myself. I mean, you know, I'm the first person in my family where we're from. It's incredible that past uh, what uh, 15 years. It's 10, 10 years uh, since since you approached me to write for Dolce Vita. It was yeah. pretty much when I came out. I mean, that was maybe one year. Some one year, uh, it's nine months before I popped out, and you. It's so it's already 10 years. We know each other in this relationship. So it's amazing. Yeah. I mean. You know, we always say, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. And, uh, you know, it's not a good experience for anyone. I don't think it's necessary yeah. to go into jail for marijuana at all. Uh, people like Howard, myself, uh, Neville, uh, the, the, we've all had our experience, unfortunately. And hopefully a lot of people watched us a little bit and don't have to have that experience. Maybe that, that was the good thing for it. But, you know, I'm still doing it. It didn't stop me, I, 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 not for a minute. Uh, it was just a waste of time, but uh, I wrote a lot of stuff and now I, maybe one day I get a book out of that, but uh, you know, it wasn't a waste of time. It, things happen for reasons. Yeah, yeah. It's very difficult to understand it. It's but an oriental thing, right? You have to work it out yourself. It's no one giving you the answer on a, on yeah. a, on, in the spoon, you know, and uh, yeah. Also our, our uh, meet in, in, uh, in Berna. Yep was uh, 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 completely not uh, pro programmed, you know? Mm. Uh, in that time I, I had only a, a print of a cover of number zero, you remember? Zero, it was, uh, it was the beginning of the first, yeah. Yeah, because I, I You only nothing. had the cover, you only yeah, had the cover, the I cover. remember, I yeah, remember, yeah, 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 yeah I remember. Because it was a film, right? Mm. And, uh, and, uh, Very funny, yeah. yeah. Somebody... Uh, it's changed a lot, man, it changed a lot. Yeah, in 10 years, it's yeah. incredible. Amazing. But now we, we can be happy of the situation. You don't think? Well, we survived. That's yeah. already a good thing, you know. Uh, we got stronger. Yes, we. That's a, also a good thing. And uh, I think we're here for a bit more time. So that's also a good thing. I think you know, in general, the, the governments and that could have been a bit more helpful. Mm -hmm. You know. Mm -hmm. Because we're not, in the end, we're not against anybody. We don't, there's no victims in this, in this whole thing. You know, you fall asleep, the worst thing that happens to you in marijuana. So, really, I don't know why the government's taking so long to understand that this versus alcohol is just nothing. And, but alcohol's everywhere. I can buy it in the supermarket yeah. down in my village, you know. And every, every day that uh, million people. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. People. yeah. So I don't know. I mean, you know, there's not not a lot of logic in this world. You have to make your world logical. So you basically you make what the best are out of your area. You know, so there's a lot of little worlds going on. You yeah. know, within this, and uh, and we we yeah we have like-minded people around us. And you know, I, I don't know. We you know don't do anything to excess, and everything's okay. And but nowadays I'm more into. Uh, developing extractions and, uh, and, and looking at what's inside the plants. I mean, you know, 10 years ago, for example, we were in, in the Magadino plane, we were at the cutting edge of turpin profiling. We were doing all this stuff we're doing that's just come into the limelight now already 10 years ago. We were way ahead of our time. Even we don't realize how, how much we were ahead because we didn't know what exactly what we had. Yeah. And now with the laboratories helping us, making the invisible visible, we already see so many things that we got there and what can be used and what's, 
what can't be used and you know it, it, it's like if science helps a little bit uh, how it is now it goes very quickly yeah. we got we got 50 cures yeah. for different illnesses if science doesn't help us we're we're still in the underground you know and it will happen but it will happen slower you know and uh, some people don't have that time you know so what to do so in, before we, yeah. we talk about the, the, the American situation, yeah. and uh, in Italy now that we have this problem, that uh, when we start with Dolce Vita we, uh, to, to work in this market, uh, I thought that the, the, the best situation can be the legalization. Okay? Now I, I, I'm not sure of this, because uh, um, uh, we think that can be the, the monopoly oh. of uh, this company, this big lobby that can uh, come in this market, uh, like tobacco, you know? Uh, is illegal to grow tobacco in Italy. Mm -hmm. is it uh, any, you need registration in, in Switzerland right. as well. And uh, we think that the, the best uh, the best situation, the best op op option can be that uh, all people can grow three plants for personal use. Because also the experiment of cannabis social claim in Spain is, was not very good because uh, there are the tourists that go and, uh, and buy a lot of cannabis. Uh, there's a black market still. There's, 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 there's yeah. a lot of confusion now. Yeah. Uh, wh what, uh, what do you think? Which is mm. the, best, uh, the best option in Italy for you? In Italy it's very difficult because they, they, they have a big use of cannabis. So okay? They have a big use of everything here in, in Italy, like in Spain. Uh, live and let live. Uh, that seems to work in the Mediterranean countries where they, uh, they self-regulate themselves with the, some of these associations that may be uh, coming to Italy also, I, I read recently. But um, there, there needs to be a lot of education, you know. Instead of people sticking their head in the, in the ground and when they talk about cannabis, they have to understand what things we're looking at in cannabis in the medical side and how we define medical cannabis. It's not all cannabis is medical okay yeah, yeah. that that's what they say but there are some that are more medical than others and and like it at our the CBD crew we define four percent CBD and four percent THC and higher is a medical strain all the rest we don't consider that was just a, an example but the, the the reason we do that uh, we have to explain and then people start to understand what if they've got Crohn's disease they need something in this concentration and this it's really at the beginning of a new medicine and there's a need for education and at the moment the education is lacking in Italy. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they're just running to protect themselves, to make a little bit of money, keep their businesses going. They have a problem with making money everywhere at the moment so you know I understand they don't have a lot of extra money to go and investigate and time yeah. to but that's, you know, Dolce, Dolce Vita has been doing that pretty well for 10 years already now. It's just that maybe it doesn't get to every single person that needs to read it. Like, the new population that I experience is not recreational growers. It's, it's mothers looking yeah. out to try to educate themselves on how to make this sort of oil from a, a, an outdoor plant, for example, which is a, a very concentrated cannabinoids. And, uh, you know, this is solving epilepsy in children. It doesn't have THC in this, in this particular one. Um, and, uh, you know, when you see a two-year-old child, uh, you don't want to give them THC. As a parent, I don't want to give them THC at that age. But I'm happy to try CBD, for example, because I know what that does. And I see the effects, and I've got four or five children on this stuff in Spain who don't have seizures anymore. I mean, I see it physically. So I don't know what's taking so long for the, f the, the governments and the pharmacies to, to see these things. They're, they're seeing it, but they've got a lot of legal restrictions and stuff, I understand. But the thing is that, that there are sick people out there that have been given up by traditional medicine. And, and these people come to us because they've got nowhere else to go. And we give them these things and they go back. Some of them cure themselves. One lady, uh, she had had tumours in her brain and, and after three days of using CBD, they've had the CAT scan and you can prove it in science, it's just gone. And two years later, she's smiling and she's, uh, you know, they, they wrote her off. That's an extreme case, of course, but I mean, you know, things like that start to happen. Uh, I, I've done very well from the plant. The plant's always looked after me, I looked after it, but 
now it's time, our time, like Howard and I, we, we, we run around giving lectures and, and trying to educate people on on how to help themselves. We make the seeds so they can grow it at home. But uh, I think that uh, in, uh, in a place like Seattle, Denver and the place where now is legal, yeah. the people go directly in the shop by uh, the, 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 the cannabis and, and smoke it, okay? Yeah. Uh, for the extractions, they or, can buy yeah, yeah, all yeah. of that. Uh, about for, for the medical use, okay, we, we know that uh, this is a, a miracle, okay, mm. that it's mm. good and uh, it's all okay. But about the re recreational use, uh, I think that if uh, one person grow their plant, uh, have to 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 know it, to mm. understand the culture of cannabis, uh, the, the roots, uh, yep. and uh, and. Uh, uh, it's necessary to know all culture of a plant to grow it well because if you don't nothing about the growing you, you, you can't grow a good plant right yeah for this reason I, I, I try to to, uh, to to tell to, to, to all people that it's better the auto production because if a people go in the in the gro in, in the shop in the coffee shop buy and smoke maybe they, they, they don't nothing about, uh, about uh. the cannabis. Mate, I, I fully agree with you. I, you know, I'm very much into control your own medicine. So you, if you grow your own vegetables, you know what you put in them. You know, Good, right, what, right. you go and buy it in the supermarket. You take right. potluck. If you don't have much money, you buy it in a cheaper supermarket, and you surely don't know what you buy. But this is in your hands. You know, um, there are responsible people out there. You need to certificate those people to understand. It's just like every other industry. If we don't start to make um, a union where we have standards and, and that standard is based on science, where we can prove what we talk about rather than just my opinion. is re the, the two differences is this. I have missed an IC bank. That's my recreational opinion. People like my opinion, so they buy Super Silver Haze, they buy Black Widow. In CBD crew, I don't have an opinion. I have science. Well, I, I, I yeah, prove I it. I and if you want to see why I, I, I chose this line and I went down this way, I can prove it on every step I went down the way with a laboratory test. Okay? Recreational, scientific. That's what I call medicinal. When you're serious about medicine, you have to talk to laboratories and, and pharmaceutical companies. You can't come with my opinion. You have to come with papers. Sure. And I have a book of papers of every plant that I have and what's in it and what cannabinoids and how many concentration and so <clears throat> you know this is now we're playing with with the correct rules and the, in the correct game before we were underground marijuana enthusiasts you know with hobby farming at the best and we were working in another job so we've grown up you know I've worn both sides for a long yeah. time I understand it very well but but <clears throat> the time now is that if we don't if we don't want to say goodbye to our industry we have to get scientific we have to start to play correctly you need to lobby in politics you need to have friends in all different walks of life to understand that you're not hurting anyone and that you're bringing work to areas that traditionally are probably dead now Spain will will, will flourish from if they give them the cultivation licenses for the clubs, a lot of people will come back to work. But, uh, you know, same in Italy, it would be fantastic yeah. to see that. It has an old culture of hemp. It has the sun, it has yeah, pretty yeah. good water. It doesn't need a lot of fertilizers. It can really bring back, you know, I mean, this is, I'm, I'm talking about things that everyone talked about for many years, but it's now, we're pretty close to, we're in a crisis. It might be the best thing that happened to the marijuana industry in a way to give it a, 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 um, a pedestal to, for people to now go, well, listen, we've got nothing else, we better try this because it pays the bills. And it might maybe yeah, some farm. Yeah, maybe it, it's like that, I don't know. But uh, all I know is I'm still doing it and I'm, uh, I had many times a smack on the hand that I, I think, should I do it again? Yeah, we do it again. It's, I can't not do it. I would do it even if I wasn't in the public or you know what I mean so it's part of me and I think um, I think it's part of a lot of people it doesn't mean it's all of them but you know it's like a glass of red wine I love to drink a glass of red wine I don't need to do it every day but if I'm gonna drink it it better be something that I like to drink as well so I educate myself on the wine 
which one area I like. I like Barolo, so happen, yeah. you know. So I, uh, I've been up there and I had a look in the area. It's Italians are interested like that. If they like a cheese, they go to the mountain yeah, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. you know, anyone with a culture that take care Maybe about. It's one of the best places in the world to, to grow a hand. But <laughs> I, I think it's, uh, you know, we have all, because you we have, have it all. A mountain place and and a sea place. You have a, 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 a tradition of gardening, yeah. you know, you're very strong gardeners in the world. Yeah, but they lost all, all the uh, culture, The, the, the yeah, touch yeah. with the earth the, a bit. The how-no, how-no? The know-how. The know-how, okay. Yeah, yeah. We, yeah. we lost it, uh, mm. now we have to restart. I, I don't think it's so far away, it's still genetically in the blood yeah, yeah, yeah. of yeah, the yeah, Italian. Yeah, sure. The Spanish gardener, the Italian gardener, the, you got the Mediterranean is a fantastic place yeah. for this, man. You know, the other thing that people forget about is we can stop even this international transportation of hashish from Morocco. It could be growing. <laughs> it can be growing in Europe. Yeah, I know, I know. But with all products. With yeah. with all products, I know. But I mean, this this could put um, the value back into the work place and to the farms that have died a little bit and, and supplement crops. And it doesn't have to be grown all year, but it can be grown at the end of the tomato season. You can have a quick crop. You make a few extra dollars, the farms get better again, people get more work. It's, I don't look at it just, you know, like how I suppose the word has always been interpreted. People thought it was black, it was dark. Cannabis has, has helped much more people than it's hurt. I've never seen it really hurt anyone. I mean, some people can't handle it, but they can't handle coffee most of the time. Those people, they shouldn't do anything. The ones that I see, I, I, you know, the Luke's of Paradise who are doing the, the medical bike tours now and, and they're getting inspired from this stuff, you know, uh, I think this fantastic. I, yeah. I, I mean, uh, it gives me uh, great pleasure to see some of the, the old guys still pushing on because it's easy to, to make some money and stop, you know, but I don't think that's exactly what the plan had in mind yeah, for yeah. me, you know, but me maybe, too. yeah, <laughs> yeah, you're still doing it. <clears throat> You know, and, and well, I'm, I'm just interested in the way it's going. I keep learning something each year, though. What about the revolution of uh, CBD? Revolution of CBD? Well, you know... It's a revolution? <laughs> it's a pretty big word, you yeah. know. Revolution? No, I think it's... Uh, evolution it's something that has, is naturally evolving about the plant as we begin to take away the invisible layers we the things we couldn't see we knew it was high in THC we didn't know what CBD did we were looking at THC all of a sudden you start to see what that does antagonist protagonist uh, CBD does the opposite basically the opposite stuff to the THC then you start to do trials and I had a dog who uh, in Spain it, it ate too much marijuana, it was starting to foam. We put a few drops of CBD oil in its mouth. Half an hour later, it looked like it was totally normal again. I mean, you know, things like that, you just go, whoop. And then, uh, and then slowly these little, the children's story I told you, the yep. young children's seizures, uh, people with Crohn's disease, if, you know, I, I, every day I'm talking, 90% of my day I talk to sick people who have never grown marijuana, who don't know anything about it and looking to start to grow a CBD variety because they heard that this is what their mother needs for some disease, you know? So it's, it's a completely different market that never existed yeah, before. Yeah, yeah. So I don't think I've lost anything. I think we're just gaining sure. a, a bigger section of people. And I like these people because, you know, <clears throat> it's like a clear board. You can write, you can show them exactly how to do it properly and they can grow better than some people who have been growing for 10 years already. <laughs> you know what I mean? They're more clean, let's say. So it's a very interesting time and uh, you know, I think the CBD thing, the, the, I don't want to harp on about it because many people do, but uh, the, the girls that work in our office at CBD crew in, in, uh, in Barcelona, they deal with people every day with so many different illnesses. They put their testimonies up so people can just read the other people to understand if they have the same sort of diseases. We're not doctors. We're, we're just guys who've made some genetics that work well for certain things. And we're trying to, to see how it helps. 
So everyone helps us by telling us what it does for them, you know. But we see at different dosages. We're, we're now, we've found the plants. We've found how to take the concentrations out. And now we're playing with science. I've hired a chemist now. Uh, he's on Mr. Nice's uh, payroll all the time. And he's researching the different combination and the different concentrations like, you know, that, that are in pills like this or that are in tincture like this. They're all different concentration and different uh, um, doses. And that is at the moment where we see it helps Crohn's disease or it helps epilepsy or it helps, and, and the dosage is becoming, uh, we're becoming chemists by just curiosity, you know what I mean? Uh, it's really interesting because uh, a lot of the people don't have any chemistry that are working with us and they're all, uh, they're all learning how to work out these things for themselves and uh, housewives are doing this at home, you know, they're, they're producing that in America. If you walk into a, a, a dispensary, that's a normal way to buy uh, uh, one gram of, of uh, concentrate cannabinoids, you know, maybe 90% and that, that might be bought, say, uh, once a month for a sick kid. So there, there is a lot of knowledge, but it's not concentrated and uniform at okay. this moment. That's the problem. But it's like uh, uh, the, it's oil? Is, is it like a Rick Simpson oil? That's, a, that's a, uh, a, like a Rick Simpson oil. Okay. It's an extraction that we do. Our method through, uh, but very clean. Which percent, percent I have these? The, this have, uh, I, I know this one have 73% CBD and 3% THC. Okay. Yeah. It's the base of this which we mix up with olive oil and it's the base of this which we mix up with THC, uh, turpin and grapeseed oil. And so th this is what we give to children mainly. This is what we give to... Uh, 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 sick, very sick people. Uh, okay. um, the, 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 there, is, there isn't the possibility that the, the big uh, company uh, like Bayern are uh, come in the market and, and, uh, and make a monopoly about this product? Of course. It's very real. And it will happen. It's a matter of time. So, I mean, Matteo, I'm not a chemist. I do this. You know why I make these things? Because so many people turn up at our office with nowhere to go, no one to help them. They don't know what to do. And we've got, we've got the seeds. We've got some seeds. Uh -huh. Okay? We only wanted to sell seeds to these guys. So you can go and you can buy, you buy five seeds. You plant them in the ground. And then you make your, your tinctures and your Rick Simpson oils and your... We, we would like to teach them how to do that, so we don't have to do that. I'm too busy yeah, doing yeah, plants. You know. But these things came about because we are, we're trying to help people um, understand what it is. Uh, we give them recipes how to do it. The girls are incredibly helpful. But still, you need greenery. You need the plants, the high CBD, high THC plants to, to make these things. So. You know, we even tell them, go and grow your thing, bring it back dry, and we'll show you how to do that. I mean, I would set up a, a workshop tomorrow to educate mothers, because yeah. they'll educate and other mothers. And, you know, it's really very cheap medicine. The symptoms, the side effects are near nothing. Your hair doesn't drop out, your teeth don't fall out. The worst thing that happens, you might fall asleep, and some people really need that. Um, I can't see anything negative about it. And it's actually, you control everything. You don't wait for a pharmacy company to put their stamp on that and tell you it costs you 50 bucks a, a pill. You go and make it for five cents a pill. And you, or, or two dollars, or three euros a pill. What, what we've, at the moment we're making it, and it's expensive for us because we're doing it in, in a very uh, climate control yeah, yeah, thing. Yeah, right. But I mean, I know that if you grow this in a big area, the, the, the cost of the medicine is nothing. It's negligible. It can be grown in space as well. We are in a particular period now of the story because now can change everything, maybe. Or, or these stay, <laughs> I'm hoping. Or these stay free for the, for the people, but, uh, but uh, it will never it's be like free. a utopia. 
listen, everything that will be for human consumption, whether it's olives or pizza or wine, needs certain certification for human consumption. We will have to, I mean, normally this can't be happen. This can't happen. This can only happen if, if I'm a friend and you know me and, you know, that's how it works at the moment. But for, for that to be uh, not the wrong medicine, because there are companies that are putting uh, hemp-derived CBD and without turpin, without anything into that and saying there's a cure for cancer, that's a load of rubbish. There's also bad companies out there doing the wrong thing in the wrong concentrations. And that's why people need to understand where, what they have and what they, the minimum they need. There's a company, there's in, in uh, America, the CBD Project. It's a website. Mm -hmm. And they, you can go on there and they can tell you how many milligrams of THC and CBD you need for certain sicknesses. They've done, re they do, they, they're um, linked in with universities who are doing research all the time. So they're updating their information. We're, we're a partner with them. And so we tell people to just go and check what things you need because dosing is the most important. It's all right to have the plan, but if you don't know how much to take, you can either hurt yourself or, I mean, hurt yourself. You can overdo it and uh, fall asleep or not do enough and then feel nothing. So, you know, we're really, there's a lot of things that we have to learn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, we, it, hope. We, uh, we hope. I think that we are also lucky to live this moment. I think it's uh, very particular. I think uh, we're in a very fantastic period. You know, it's just it's changed already in ten years. You know, but the thing that I'm hoping is that the, the European, the Europeans are a little bit silly in my head because I've been here. I choose to be in Europe. Ten years ago, I would have told you America. Forget about it. You're never going to see me there doing this. And 10 years later, I'm in America with a license, able to do everything in like cowboy fashion and go into it. Uh, no, you're regulated to whoever, but you can do it big. I mean, it's like Texas. You, you know, you can go in there and put up five greenhouses, not one like you could do in Italy. And then you'd be monitored by, it's too traditional here. They've got to get over their problem with, with whatever it is, regulate it, get some tax money from it and, and go and put people back to work, it's just that simple. There's those boom, 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 and it's already going. And it doesn't take much, the infrastructure's there, you got the land, you got the water, you got everything. It could even complement the, the crops that they have at the moment. They can have an extra crop. The world is is in your house. You have to change something here to change the world, you know. And that, well, I teach the kids that. I think you know, if you can think small, but it will be big one day. And uh, you know, we do good things because yeah, right. we're still, you know, and and that way the world changes because the kids are the future, mm -hmm. you know, by far. I'm happy for that because I think they've got a. They're okay. They, uh, I like the next generation. I think they. But I feel that the. Uh something happened in this moment in the world Can because I have um, the, part, the ashtray yeah thanks mate. a lot of people the change the mentality yeah sure a lot of people go away from the big city to rediscover the contact with the nature with the the, the slow life uh, um, i think that this is a particular moment we will see do you think that is a, a good thing yeah sure I, I i try to be optimist because mm -hmm. uh, i'm young and yeah. I, I have a boy of three years old and, and uh, i I have to, to be optimistic, mm. well, but, uh, but uh, I stopped to, to hit uh, uh, the, the meat uh, five years ago yeah. and uh, five years ago the people, uh, my friend uh, told me you are crazy, how you can live without uh, meat? <laughs> now every restaurant in Italy yeah. have to, 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 to make the, a uh, vegetarian uh, dish, yeah, because, yeah. because the people ask this. I, I, I feel some change. I don't know. I will. Uh, listen, I, I, I don't eat meat for 20 years, you know. And you don't uh, meat I don't eat oh, meat I, I since don't 1989. Oh. My family eat meat. All they of them. Are me. Alive. Uh, me. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, the life is what you choose and how you make yeah. it. And, um, um, you know, everyone have have their thing when you have children of course you think very differently because you know that's something that you, is bigger than us but the the, the thing about um
change. It is, it, it's happening all the time, Marta. We, we change. Ten years ago, look, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, it just, it happens very slowly and you don't feel it, you know? Yeah. But one day you look back and you go, oof, we yeah. did a lot of things. I think I'm an optimist. I'm always, I wake up and I feel good. You know, and I see the, 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 the nature, I go for a walk every morning up the hill. Uh, you know, I stay in, I stay touching things because I, I, I don't want to forget it, you know, because it's very easy. You live in the city, you don't have that opportunity all the time. I understand decentralized. I prefer to live in a, you know, with internet nowadays, it doesn't matter where yeah. you live, you know. You choose that. I don't need so many people. I go into that and then I come back out to quiet. I think you've, the Pepe Grillos and the people like that also do that because, you know, it's uh, it's intense lifestyle nowadays, you know. Um, you burn out quickly, uh, you know, things happen. Uh, I think when you keep uh, one foot on, in nature, you, 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 you keep a good, you know, sort of foot on the ground sort of thing. And, uh, I understand. I, I had kids here yesterday, a 22-year-old, she had a baby, a mm -hmm. uh, German lady, and with an Italian boy from Torino. Um, they don't have much money, they just bought some land in Indonesia and they're going off to build a house, you know. They don't carry mobile phones. It's very unusual, they don't have yeah, mobile yeah, yeah. phones. There's, you know, there are people out there still looking for their way and, and there will always be, you know. Same in Italy, you go to the squats and the pagolas and the, uh -huh. all those places in the Mil Milano, you, you see there's still <laughs> people that don't accept all of that stuff. But change doesn't mean it has to be negative all the time. That's something that I think, you know, the traditional people, the older people are a bit scared of. I'm happy with it. I live with change, you know, it's good. But uh, for politicians and for economies, change is pretty, is, is a bit, can be heavy, you know. But, uh, the, you know, we're getting, the, the biggest problem is we're gonna have too many people in this world in, in the next period of time. So if we don't keep adapting to it, we're going to become our own worst enemy and, and we, we're going to implode, you know, we're going to hurt ourselves like maybe how dinosaurs went out in the end. We've become too successful. So we have to be careful, you know, yeah. you've got to keep that balance. I don't know what it is. The CBD is, um, I mean, you look, this, a sick person takes this much, right? Six person. In uh, 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 someone who, with a, a, a problem. Uh -huh. You know, this much, maybe three times a day. It's like the size of a rice grain, you know? Um, and this, uh, two or three times a day. So that lasts for maybe uh, uh, a month for some people. It's just a very spicy, a bit uh, um, peppery taste, and nothing. What it does, it gives you clarity. It, okay. uh, you know, so uh, you would. Feel? Would you like to try some? Uh, no, I no. want to know how. Well, what uh, you feel I, I, <laughs> me, I feel very little. To tell you the truth, I don't think I'm sick. But the thing is that um, I feel um, up. Uh, okay. Like I. Um, I woke up feeling okay. really healthy, you know what I mean? And um, I feel like someone lubricated with oil inside of my ah, okay. bones. Okay. You know, sometimes it's, uh, it's an amazing feeling. You, I can do, it's, it's just like I've been warming up for like a, an swimmer. hour. Yeah, it's like I've been swimming. <laughs> and then I, I take a, a little thing like that. Half hour later, I go for a swim. I'm an Olympic champion. Well, I feel like it anyway. <laughs> good, good. No, but I mean, but in, you know, in, in, your, in, your in mind, the head, it, absolutely clean. Okay. You know, one thing I notice about CBD, you know, normally when you see people who've been smoking THC, yeah. the very red eye is like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. CBD smoker is like this, white. And if you're stoned and take CBD? You can get, uh, no stoned. Okay. It's an anti-stone. <laughs> yeah, uh, if you do, if you were really stoned and you ate this much now, like that, you wait 10 minutes, you, you, you get, it's gone. But there are gone. some contraindications, like THC have no. some contraindications. CBD, no? No, not collateral. No. It, it's, uh, what do you mean by that? I didn't... I okay, with the THC, okay, yeah. uh, um, 
if I smoke uh, uh, on one uh, strong uh, weed, yeah. I, I, I have uh, some, ah, yeah, yeah. You can have I some, yeah. Like no, it. you have or, nothing. Or, or my heart pump. Yeah, 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 yeah. You, you become paranoid yeah, or you right. get palpitation. Right. No, the THC works, the CBD works the other way. It, it relaxes the body. So it, it, it's actually, THC is very, uh, a bit psychedelic in a way, uh, psychotic. You know, it works on the brain. Uh, the CBD, it kind of works on the body and negates that. Uh, uh, if you have equal CBD and THC, like in the pill, you don't even know you've taken THC. If you just okay. took that in THC, you would be stoned. Okay, take my money, uh, give me this. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Uh, I'm more how than much? happy. <laughs> how much, uh, uh, how much uh, one, one gram? I don't know. Uh, uh, well, you know, that's one gram. Okay, that, that's, this, this, that, is one gram? this is one gram of oil. Okay. To make this, we have had to make, uh, we take one kilo uh, of, of dried uh, um, CBD plant, we make about 70 to 90 grams okay. of this. Okay. From one kilo. From one kilo. Okay, it's a process, but it's a slow process, but okay. we make, and so other varieties, the ones that are high in THC and high in CBD, this is just high in CBD and very low in okay. THC. Uh, maybe give 100 grams or 120 grams. They, they all have slightly different amounts. But what we do is we analyze those extracts. So this extract we analyze, we see exactly the concentration and with the chemical formula, we water it down to the same level as the THC one and then we blend it one to one. So we, we water it down with a uh, grapeseed oil, a uh, uh, perfectly natural, uh, uh -huh. very good oil. The, or the semi, but vinicholi they call it. Vinicholi is from. Ah. The, it, it's only from only from that, and you can buy in Italy in many places. It's got no cholesterol, so we mix it with that. Uh, so you can get a uh, fifty percent CBD, fifty percent yeah. THC, and then you you blend uh, and you make a concentration according to which problem you're looking to do. And what uh, do you use to the to do the extraction? Because I read we, that the Rick Simpson oil can be toxic because yeah, used, uh, it's very. He uses NAFTA, a diesel. <laughs> we don't use any. We're, we're totally organic. We use a um, a very uh, high grade of fruit alcohol. We don't do anything with. Uh, 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 we we use a little bit of a of, of very high grade butane for some extracts that we do very limited, very small amounts with. But the majority we do with a very high fruit grain alcohol and uh, we evaporate that all off. We do it in large amounts because it's too, the most economic and the best way and the least uh, residual with, with contamination, uh, you know, products um, is alcohol. Uh, basically, it's very easy to evaporate, you know. And uh, the, the quality of the oil that you're getting is incredibly clean. You know, I've taken it to the laboratory. But, uh, you, you already... Uh, sell it with the company or not? <coughs> no, no, no. We we make it basically for um, for members of, of our illegal. thing. It's illegal. It's still too high. In three percent THC is still yeah. too high. We have to be under point three. Uh, the, the, this the, this for example is point three percent THC okay. and one point two percent CBD. This is a legal product. Okay. So we sell that in the shop in, in Barcelona. Okay. And that's for the ch child epilepsy and for uh, insomnia and a few other things like a small, uh, like a bark flower remedy. It's a bit like a bark flower remedy. Uh, why, the, you, you have, why you put the 3% of the acacid inside? Well, no, that's when we take the plant and we ah, make the okay. extraction. The natural is, it's very low THC in this plant. Normally okay. it would be 50% THC and 20 CBD. This one's 72 CBD and 3% THC. It, we, if we can take, I mean, when we take this off, okay. we can make a le okay. we, we make you, a legal you are product. Okay, to, to put out the, the THC. Yes, but we still need to keep inside here, we need to keep the turpin. We the turpin is very important. We don't want to kill it. And so making a whole plant extraction is still for me better than just taking chemicals from different plant and put them together. So I can't explain it at the moment, but I have a very strong 
uh, feeling and we do research um, and one day I can explain it with science but the turpin and the cannabinoid is doing something together that that we're not aware of just at this moment. Yeah, so-called you know. entourage effect. Yeah, the entourage effect. They, they talk about it, but no one really knows what entourage exactly. is. But, but they're, not for all problem, but for some problem, it really is a key and a lock, and it, it works both ways. And they're starting to do some research on things, and they're seeing that turpin um, is, is well, certain turpins, not all turpin, but certain turpin, uh, definitely having a very positive effect. And... Uh, I see it also. I, when I give the same extraction that's made specifically from um, hemp plants, like in Croatia, and in our extraction, there's a big difference with the same people. It's not strong enough. It don't have the... something's missing. It does help, but very short time. You know, there's certain things that are, uh, are there in the hemp. But, you know, you grow 1% uh, CBD varieties of hemp, with very low THC compared to 12 and 15% CBD varieties. It, the flavors and stuff is very different. So one day we'll be able to explain it, but I mean, uh, I'll tell you first, all right? <laughs> well. Mm. We get more and more into science now, and the more you open up, there's another door, and there's another yeah, door, yeah. and there's another door, and it's incredible. And you think, uh, shit, I knew everything last week and now I don't know shit again. It's just, I begin. And with like, you know, there's a lot of very good guys. Uh, uh, Grassi is in Rovigo. He's doing some Grassi. good research. You know, Fido Plant in Spain, they do some great stuff. Uh, 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 THC Pharma in uh, Germany, they're fantastic with their, uh, with their standards for a lot of the laboratories. I mean... You know, you have to really find the right companies to work with like anything else. Not every laboratory does a good job. Not every uh, um, medical company can make the right dosage all the time. You know, there, there's still differences amongst all the things. And I didn't know that before. I learned that because of just going out and finding out how to do it in this one and what they do differently and, and then testing them and seeing that they have different results for the same thing. And you know, you know, so you have to really learn a lot of things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it's been uh, it's it's interesting, but some days it's. Uh, you talk to, to 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 know well about cannabis, and now you don't know nothing. <laughs> yeah, well, I thought I knew everything, but you know, the the more you think you know, the less you are, actually do know. Um, but I know. I mean, we know a lot. We help a lot of people, but yeah. it's just kind of. Uh, from when, when I begin to where I am now, uh, you know, I, I don't know this road exists before, you know. It's a, it's a new one. I cut it through the bush, I think. But, but uh, I still don't know where it's going from here. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, 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 sure. It's, it's going to blossom. There's no doubt in this 100% pharmaceutical companies are the next step. With big money guys in America, it's happening already. You go in America, if you go online, you see... Uh, 100 products you see pills you see yeah. <laughs> chewing gum you, it's like it's incredible yeah. holland had 30 America years and they're going backwards at the moment they're closing everything in holland yes I see that uh, many. It's very bad, man. Holland, it's many Holland growers are going to Spain to oh, grow. Full. They just ma mass migration. Mass migration. Yeah. On the 1st of May, when they bring in the new law in Holland, people don't believe it. And then the shops start to close. They lose 90% of their trade. People stop to. They think three years I can go into jail for three years. <laughs> And you don't believe, but I mean, I was in Spain yesterday. Uh, it's, a, it's a lot more going on down there. The Dutch uh, sound you hear everywhere. <laughs> it's happening, mate. I mean, Holland's... But I think Holland's doing something uh, affordable, you know. I think what they're doing is that they're, they're actually just getting rid of... Slowly, they've gone from 700 coffee shops to 147 or something. And slowly they'll get rid of those. Um, 
their Bedra Can and all of the big medical companies are slowly getting bigger. They're building height bigger facilities, I hear. And I think Holland doesn't give up money unless it's going to make more money on something else. And I think they're going for more for the medical side of things and less for the recreational side. And that's how they're going to normalise this last 30 years project. That's my personal feeling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean... I believe it. Yeah, I, le I left Holland, uh, I have a Dutch wife, but I left Holland in 1998 when I sold the greenhouse, so, I, I, you know, I love the place, it's a good place, good people, but, uh, I don't know, governments are, they change, then the laws change again, just when you thought you were safe, they change the government and you've got to change the laws and it's very confusing for the people. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, I didn't know if I wanted uh, to do the big growing again, like in Switzerland in 2003, you know, and um, then I got the license last August. I got a license. I, I was, um, I can tell you this story about the license. Out of the blue, I receive an email one day from the Washington State Liquor Board. And they they are they send to maybe maybe quite a few Dutch companies. They ask a questionnaire, and this is um, this is way before um, they had. Uh, I think they had voted. This is before they had voted in marijuana into the government, um, or by the people in the referendum with Colorado. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so they were looking for ways of regulating. And they asked many questions and I answered them one day. I saw .gov, so I thought it was government, right? So I answered the email and then very quickly, uh, a young man called Aaron uh, contacted me okay. and we, we talked many hours over four months. They asked me to help them uh, with some advice uh, on the quantities of how much production they thought per farm and things. and. Many, many questions, very interesting questions. Only someone who's thought this through can ask these questions. And so it was, for me, it was, finally I have someone equal who understands some stuff and we were talking and talking and talking. And then I asked them, hey, um, what do you need to apply to get this life? They told, they told me, um, um, Scott, we only need um, someone who lives in Washington State for three months as a resident or more. I said, well, it, can I, if I have a friend who, and they said, of course. And three months before, I had signed a contract to distribute Mr. Nice and CBD crew seeds in Washington State just by, just by chance, you know. And then they voted it in. I asked this guy if he would come, and then we got the license last August. And it happened, boom, 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 and then I'm thinking, oh, and now I'm licensed. But I still can't go into the country because of my past uh, problems in Switzerland. I still have a problem until the end of this year or, or six, six months more, something. It's on the computer. And when that's finished, I'm allowed to enter. But I still got the license. I still, that's why I'm a Skype grower because I, uh, so it's a ridiculous situation. Yeah, yeah, you, uh, yeah. If I have to explain this to my kids, I, I, it doesn't make sense. <laughs> I know. It's ridiculous. Yes. But it's my, it's my reality at this moment, and I've found investors for a lot of money to do all of it. I'm, I'm doing it. I'm building. And we're going ahead, and we have the license, and we have all of the building permissions, but uh, I don't have the visa. So uh, as soon as that comes, I'll, uh, I'll be... <laughs> I don't, I don't mind. I've had other situations, you know, sitting in jail was much worse than uh, looking through the bars at, at Agricola and you can't touch it, you know, so at least this one I can... Uh... But I just say that the world is still full of stupid situations. Yeah. You just have to make the best of whatever they throw at you sometimes, you know. I, it's, I, I find it very difficult to uh, explain my lifestyle to my children because they but they follow me and they and they see things and they maybe see this the things that they like to see and and it's okay but uh, my wife she understands it fully and she works with me but uh, it's still difficult you know some days you think oh, oh.
I would just like to pay tax and do the normal things and do that if it, it, and register my varieties. That would just be so easy, but it doesn't exist. So, you know, you make the most of it.